the vlog episode of Road to Worlds. In this episode, we're gonna get up close and personal and get a much more intimate view into my training. I'm at my mother-in-law's house and it is 5 a.m. in the morning, which is why I have to shh, and which is also why I'm vlogging because the team is everywhere and I'm in LA by myself to get the training done back at the home gym and barber brigade. So I'm really excited about that. I always love, love, love training at the home gym. Um, not my actual home physical gym, but Barber Brigade LA because nowhere else matches the vibes, the intensity, the culture, the feeling there. So first things first, I gotta get ready. Um, and I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of uh, what I have to wear because it's special. Check it out. Does this look familiar? What is this? Huh? <gasps> Wait, is this from back in the day? Is this the OG designs? What? Are these OG? Is that the OG logo? Wait, is that the posse hoodie? What in the world? But wait, what is that? Is that a special custom label with the new logo? But the old, but the new, but the old, but the new? What does that mean? All right, if you guessed that we're bringing back some BB classics for our 10th year anniversary year, then you are 100% correct. Every single item is updated with a bigger print because before it was a little bit smaller to match the, uh, the current aesthetic. And as I've shown you, every single item also has a limited edition label to show that this is a very, very, special re-release and this drops March 27th next Wednesday I believe at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time not the usual 7 p.m. because we do read our messages and we have a big international audience and when it's at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time a lot of you guys are up at midnight 3 a.m. 5 a.m. trying to catch the drop and we feel bad so we're like okay let's try to find another time where more of our audience um, is awake and it's more convenient for you guys so we're changing to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and I have a feeling these are gonna go quick because it's been 10 years since we dropped these designs so check those out by the way how come no one told me that I got some glistening ass lips Jesus Christ I look like I've been eating Vaseline all morning time to get ready to fucking train I'm gonna need this pre-workout so bad because um, my mother-in-law lives in the hood and if you live in the hood, you know, there's a lot of noises that go on all night long from drag racing to gunshots. And last night, I don't know what was going on, but there's like some dog across the street that was barking literally until 3 a.m. Like, not even like in distress, but this kind of barking. If you own a German Shepherd, you've heard it before, it goes, oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All until 3 a.m. I was like, shut the fuck up. I love fucking dogs. But if right now someone came and just shot this motherfucker, I'd be like, thank you so much. But it wasn't until 3 a.m. He finally knocked out. And then, uh, or maybe the owner came back in and took him into the house or something. But as you guys saw, I woke up at 5. So I only slept two hours. So I'm fucking tired as fuck. So thank God. I got my shit, take pre-workout, which is 350 milligrams of caffeine. Our pre-workout is also special because we got three species of mushrooms in there for focus. We got theanine and tyrosine, so that'll help me get me locked in, knock off some of this grogginess. We got the creatine and pump. As you guys know, creatine is very important to build muscle and strength. It is the most tested and researched supplement um, since the 60s and 70s i got pump um to super hydrate the muscles recovery blood flow all that and then of course electrolytes b complex always try to stay hydrated stay healthy so that we don't take no breaks you know we can keep pushing 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 my immunity is at its peak and i don't get sick um and i can keep being tip-top shape i'm gonna down the rest of this 
and get ready to bench. All right, since I don't have Justin here to film the cool B-roll, I'm gonna have to do it myself. Check it out. I've been getting bi-weekly physical therapy sessions for my shoulder and we think we figured out what's going on. So my left lat is so tight, like it pulls down, where it pulls my entire shoulder down, so it's not properly externally rotating, which is causing it pain. So for example, when I'm benching, like normally your shoulder should be able to be like right here, right? Where you're stacking your hands over your elbows, over your shoulder. But it, imagine my hand being here when my shoulder is still here because of the lat pulling it down. So we came up with a bunch of uh, exercises slash warm-ups to get my shoulder ready for bench. So the first thing we do is foam roll, uh, loosen up that lat so it wants to move. Then I have to activate it because my shoulder's been so jacked up for so long that it doesn't, it'll stick to the old form. So I'm doing face pulls for external rotation, um, uh, warming up the rhomboids, I'm doing these things, I forgot what they're called to get the shoulder moving so that it can externally rotate the right way, like my right shoulder, where it's pain-free. Like even when it's extremely fatigued or if I'm like grinding on a wreck, it's pain-free. This one, it's a very night and day difference whether or not my shoulder has been opened up or activated to hit a bench set even with like 135. So uh, I did a really good warm up. I feel like it's nice and externally rotated. Nothing's pulling on my upper chest. Nothing's pulling on my shoulder right now and uh, we're ready to work. been noticing on my warm-ups I've been practicing the new tempos from this block I just started it uh, two days ago so it hasn't showed up on this channel yet but if you follow my IG for my daily training um, we just adjusted it starting this block because because of my shoulder issue my body wants to resort back to the old bench method just tucking the elbows which is outdated it's an outdated technique and these days you want to stack joints as, as best as you can so the tempo has really helped me to not only trust that my shoulder can take it by going down, but it's cueing me to stack my joints on the way down before I get to the pause. Because if you're not stacking correctly by the time you get down to the bottom, when you blast it back up, that elbow is going to be wobbly, especially mine. So that feels good. I had a range today between 260 and 270. Um, I don't know if I'm feeling exceptionally well, so I'll probably pick something right in the middle, 265, trying to hit an RP6 for two. Um, I think I should be able to smoke that. I feel like uh, my bench has been progressing pretty good considering that I've, the whole time in this series I've been dealing with a hurt shoulder, but we've still been doing a good job of managing it. So on program, it's 265 for two at RP6. I'm gonna try to hit 265 for two at RP4. Try to smoke it at motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know if that's quite an RP4, but it definitely felt good. Felt like a five. Um, I'm have to watch the tape to see if I pause long enough. Because we're really trying to dial in that competition pause in training so that when it comes meet day, it's very, very predictable. Because you know a lot of times you'll hear people say, 
Oh yeah, dude, whatever you hit on meet day is usually like 10 to 20 pounds under your best training max, specifically for bench. And that's because when they're benching in training, they're not hitting those competition pauses. And anytime you have variance like that, you're not controlling all the variables on meet day. So we want to control all the variables as much as we can, where that way we can make predictable jumps, not go, oh, you know what, that moved fast. So I would jump 30 pounds, but because it's competition pause, let's just jump 17.5. We want to eliminate that. We want to be able to make predictable, predictable, predictable jumps as much as we can. I'm gonna review the tape and then I'll get back to you. Just review the footage. For sure it's an RP4, which I'm very, very happy with. So it felt heavier than it looked, which is why you never want to trust your body. You always want to review the tape. And um, all I have to do is rinse and repeat what I just did with the following reps. My back offsets are easy, it's 225, three sets of four. I just gotta maintain that um, joint stacking. Don't tuck my elbows. Keep my shoulder externally rotated, just like how I did in the warmups. And my three by four, four back offsets should be on point. To be honest, that first rep looked like even an RP two or three. So that's what makes me go, oh, okay, cool. The second rep was for sure a four. I think the difference that made it slow down, like it looked light, but what made it slow down is I didn't bring my chest to the bar on the second rep as much as the first rep. It didn't fly off as quickly. So that's something I really have to remember is to, there's like 10 bench cues to remember to do all 10 for every single rep to maximize the speed for all of them. And they don't have no No fucking lie, I think in my recent powerlifting years, that was probably the best 225 has ever felt. Because I remember back when I used to bench like 390, 225 would feel like 185, maybe like close to 135. And that first rep, woo, it's perfect. So I think my body is starting clicking, starting to click, starting to get there. Who knows, man? Got high hopes for nationals. If I can get into the mid threes, or even back to the high threes, ooh, that'd be fucking incredible. So that, that's it for bench. Top set of two, three sets of four to 25. Now moving on to accessories. So you might be wondering, what kind of weird ass exercise is that? And you're correct, it's fucking weird. But it was recommended to me by Dr. John Song, who is regarded as probably the best physical therapist, a doctorate in physical therapy uh, in powerlifting right now. He himself wrestled in high school, is a very strong powerlifter, and he's also a DPT. And uh, he told me, if you're gonna be stupid enough to do jujitsu while trying to go to nationals slash worlds, then we might as well strengthen that shoulder because uh, in jujitsu you have very unpredictable positions. So what's more important than your shoulder being strong in one plane is when your body is in instable posi or unstable positions, you want your shoulder to still be strong and still know what to do. So this block, we're starting to include that. Because I got pretty strong on the seated dumbbell press over the last uh, like 14 weeks with Coach Kyle. Got up to like 75s. Um, but even with the strong shoulder that strong, it's still not immune to like very, very slight injuries. So we're trying to build the shoulder up from the ground up. So shout out to John. 
doing a, I don't even know what they're called, fucking Z sit, 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 fucking cheerleader, put dumbbell. I don't even know what they're called, but I'm doing them. Three sets of nine per hand in a weird ass sitting position. Slightly unstable, but feels good on my shoulder actually. I feel like an animal. So I've been loving these crossbody tries because we're literally mimicking the movement of the competition bench. Right, right now my cue that my coach told me is elbows to the plates because I have a tendency of tucking. So I want to make sure I'm nice and rigid and stacking my joints. So this is literally teaching me how to stack my joints versus if I do more triceps in this way, I'll continue to tuck, which is not a bad thing for other purposes like bodybuilding, hypertrophy or whatever, or trying to get your dips strong but we're competing with bench, right? That's what we need to perform on the day of nationals, worlds, whatever. So right now, everything is specific to powerlifting. So for powerlifting, we're trying to bench. And if my problem is stacking joints and getting my triceps to fire in this plane, this is helping it so far, uh, so much for me to trust to stack my wrist with my elbow and my shoulder in line and flex my triceps and get my triceps really strong in this direction. And we're done with the workout. The last couple of accessories, I just blazed through them because to me, upper body is dessert. I'm a bro meathead at heart, so I just love like getting a crazy pump. Um, but a couple of things to keep in mind of why we're including some of these accessories. So for example, the uh, hammer dumbbell curl, you might be like, wait, I've seen in the past weeks, you were doing regular dumbbell curls, how can we change the hammer? Well, my forearms started getting tendonitis because I am training five days a week. We went from, I think like three days a week to four days a week of training to now five days a week of training. And we've been holding on five for quite a bit. So I'm using a lot of grip strength. And I realized when I do hammer dumbbell curls, um, I might have a slightly looser grip and uh, my forearms don't hurt. So we're just doing whatever we can to keep pushing, to keep redlining without blowing the engine gasket. And then face pulls at the end to, uh, build external rotation, try to get that shoulder health back. And uh, even with like the wide grip, a uh, lat pull downs you see me do, I'm trying to like not pull elbows in, which is where our, my lats are strong. I'm trying to pull, pull elbows out to mimic the bench. Like everything is specific squat, bench, deadlift, and how my accessories can help improve or build musculature for those three is the entire goal. But thank you for watching the vlog episode of Road to Worlds. And yes, you guessed it right. This is also part of the BB Classics uh, collection. And this also has the limited edition label, of course, because this is all limited edition stuff. I didn't realize how sick some of the old stuff was. So don't miss out. March 27th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're changing our drop times. See you guys there and see you guys in the next episode of Road to Worlds. Peace.